The following podcast contains adult themes, sexual content, and strong language. Basically, all the good stuff. Previously, on My Dad Wrote a Porno. Belinda pulled him over to the bed and started to stimulate his monster dick. <gasps> He's monster. got a monster prick. He's, He's got, got a monster prick. prick. He's got a... <laughs> oh, just two, two lines. He slowly entered Belinda's pussy. He felt like a man revisiting the house where he had grown up as a child. <laughs> Everything was the same, but different. <laughs> Belinda gave in to nature. Not once, but twice before the inevitable blue ejaculation cut across her dreams. Cut <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the penultimate episode of my dad wrote a porno of series two. Are you fucking kidding me? I know. Over the moon. I mean, <laughs> I'm so sad. <laughs> It honestly feels like two days ago that we were saying, welcome back to my dad wrote a porno series two. Are really? you serious? I feel like it's been a lifetime. No, because every time I do full memory erasing because there's no <laughs> point in remembering what happened. So honestly, it's every true. chapter is a fresh. But you, like no one can forget the last chapter. <laughs> oh, I know. And what happened. I mean, people have been saying that it was a bit out there and that would be the understatement of 2016 so far. Honestly. However... I was thinking about it, and the blue cum was obviously ridiculous, but way back in season one, when we had that little Q&A with Rocky, he did say his literary inspiration was Stephen King. You think that was a horror film? Well, I think he was influenced by the horror of Stephen King's writing. Has Steph King done stuff about blue cum? <laughs> I miss that one. I think Rocky's made it his own, right. admittedly, but I think that's the For origin. legal reasons. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we all know what we're going to wear for Halloween now. It's going to be Jim Sterling with, like, this zombie oh. cock hanging out of his trousers. Well, it wouldn't hang, would it? It would just flush to the ground. <laughs> yeah, it just it would drag. <laughs> <laughs> Waft. Just a baguette wrapped in Parma ham. Oh, my. Oh, James. That's baguette, he nice. wishes. Do you think you pay by the yard? <laughs> yard? I think it's like work tops. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a granite cock. <laughs> so this week's episode is... A bit of spaghetti sauce. <laughs> yes. Obviously. So I'm preempting even more food to be ruined for the world. I'm worried like he had one ball assigned for blue cum and the other just spits out ragu all the time. Pomodoro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you think it will be? Do you think it'll be pasta puttanesca? Which does mean <laughs> whore's pasta, so... Does it? Oh, very it good, very good. Normally with the chapter titles, you can get a kind of sense of where it's going to go. This I'm just baffled by but at the same time it doesn't have to be sexual it could just be that they go for pasta (laughs) what should we find out let's let's go for once should we just not (laughs) play the theme music again at the end we're done (laughs) okay belinda blink two chapter 16 a bit of spaghetti sauce Breakfast was a thoroughly American affair. (laughs) So we're up. Next day. Yeah, next day. Pancakes? What do you think? Pancakes? Pancakes, waffles, lots of maple syrup. Well, it was a thoroughly American affair. Maple syrup, beautifully overcooked crispy bacon. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, look at the burn on that. I love that char. Overcooked. It's meant to be like that, Dad. It's not like poor culinary expertise. But we don't actually do bacon like the Americans. No, we don't. They do do it so it kind of just turns into like a bacony dust when you bite into it, which yeah. is enviable. It breaks if you drop it on the floor. Exactly. It shatters into a thousand pieces. It's also very different, isn't it? Very thin and yeah. um, like too crispy. Do you not like it? No, I prefer ours. Oh, no, I like it. It's with very a bit patriotic, of... James. Yeah, you, you know where you stand with a good cut of Danish. So not ours then. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> Very much Denmark. <laughs> By name. So they had maple syrup, beautifully overcooked crispy <laughs> bacon, <laughs> eggs, and to die for waffles. <laughs> <laughs> Jim's PA, Sydney, approached the girls. Hello, Sydney. Sydney. Could be boy or girl. That's true. Like Poitiers. <laughs> Very good. Ha! You must be Belinda, and you're Bella. 
said the extremely pretty and petite Sydney. So a girl. No, actually, it could still be a boy. <laughs> <laughs> What's extremely petite? Three, five? <laughs> Linda Hunt size. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all finished eating, then just follow me to your first meeting. Oh my God, you, she sounds like Doris Day. Is I love that her. a catchphrase? If y'all finished eating, <laughs> come follow me to your next meeting. She's channeling Dolly Parton. She wants to be a songstress. Also, when did you learn to do Southern American? I've been practicing. This is your best accent so far. Thank y'all. Okay, uh, iffy. If y'all finished eating, then just follow me to your first meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Bella swigged down the last of her coffee. I think you said the last of the maple syrup. <laughs> 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 And with Belinda in tow, followed Sydney to the lifts. Once they were inside, Sydney delicately opened the top button of her blouse. What? Puffed out her cheeks and punched the 12th floor button. <laughs> <laughs> Which cheeks? <laughs> Puffed out her cheeks? Yeah. What is when, like, push the cheeks I, out? As if to say, oh, what a day. Mm. At 9am. Yeah, it hasn't even started. But I will repeat, which cheeks? Because you can puff either out. <laughs> Puffed out her cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> and punched the 12th floor button. Sorry it's so hot in here, guys. I'll get maintenance into it as soon as I deliver you to your first mate. <laughs> I'm genuinely wowed by the accent. I want him to read the whole book in this accent. <laughs> It's actually quite hard to do. When, what did, what's happened in a week? Because I feel like I can say it now because we're a safe distance away. You were fucking shit. I know. I was really bad. I do want to apologise to all of our American listeners. I oh. think they enjoyed it. I think they enjoyed how terrible it was. But I also love with this accent comes a, a hand on the hip. Yeah, it's real sass, <laughs> isn't it? Who's he channeling? Have you got an itinerary for us, Sydney? You know, a schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Said Belinda. <laughs> Patronising fucking bitch. No, said Belinda in a professional tone of voice. No, she didn't. Who doesn't know what an itinerary is? That's Belinda's first attempt at like professionalism. Also, do the Americans say schedule and we say schedule or is it the other way around? Because there might have caused some confusion there. Maybe they she's say trying to help. schedule, I think. Oh no. Do we no, say... we say schedule, don't we? I've forgotten schedule. what I say. I say calendar. <laughs> she was obviously a bit miffed. Sydney had stopped at the first blouse button. And then quickly punched the 12th. <laughs> Stop saying punch the 12th. It's <laughs> just smacking the buttons. Yeah. Like no wonder they always need maintenance out. Stop punching the fucking <laughs> yeah. buttons. Sorry, Belinda. Why, I sure have. Sydney passed over a pale blue folder to each of them. Oh, she's like, mm, reminds me of last night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Flashbacks, flashbacks. Blue flashbacks. Come. Of all the folder colours in all the world, you <laughs> happen to give me this. Two seconds later, Bella let out. A little sigh of triumph. (laughs) What's a sigh of triumph? (laughs) 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 What's up, Bella? Belinda asked. Not to offend, but I'm dining with Jim tonight. Are you with us, Belinda? Belinda quickly looked down at the page, turned it over and shook her head. She couldn't understand it. She was completely free from (gasps) 6pm. She wasn't shagging anybody. <laughs> She's been jilted. I mean, talk about a lucky escape. I'd be like, thank God <laughs> yeah. for no, that. No, but don't you think that's a review of last night's activity? Yeah, exactly. She didn't get 10 out of 10. Yeah, no, he enjoyed it. He went in twice. <laughs> Does Mate, he went that doesn't in. mean that he enjoyed it. Went in twice, James. <laughs> she was completely free from 6pm. No, I'm free all evening. <laughs> well, said Bella, gives you an opportunity to catch up on a good night's sleep. That's true. She will be knackered. She's rubbing salt in the bitch, wound. Bitch, though, yeah. That's, now, that's the bitchy comment. This is a prestige dinner. Even if you think that Jim <laughs> is a fucking walking train wreck, <laughs> you have to admit that this is an important and powerful meet and or greet. We don't know yet. <laughs> it's the only reason that they're in the bloody country, so... <laughs> yeah, she's not invited to the dinner she's come for. <laughs> I bet she's regretting inviting Bella now. Yeah, because we always knew she'd muscle in on the business. Mm. She'd probably go set up on her own rival business. Bella's pots and pans. <laughs> do we know Bella's last name? Donna? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think we do. The lift stopped and Sydney ushered the two girls through to a meeting room. Mr. Sterling will be joining you out shortly, along with his chief executive, Hank Skank. Pardon? Skank. Hank Skank. Hank Skank. Skank. Hank Skank. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hank Skank Hanky Panky Skanky <laughs> Hank Skank Widow Twanky Who is it? <laughs> Who is Hank Skank? 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 Who
skank skank? Let's read on and find out. Mr. Sterling will be John Yell shortly with his chief executive, Hank Skank. He's the chief executive and his name is Hank Skank. <laughs> she informed them. How are you spelling skank? Like I imagine with a K at S-K-A-N-K. both ends. S-K-A-N-K. Yeah. Skank. With that, Sydney left, returning to her duties on the 19th floor. Oh, it all happens on the 19th. Ni- it always goes down <laughs> on the 19th, doesn't it? Oh. Belinda had heard of this Hank Skank. <laughs> Really? Because we haven't. <laughs> She's never mentioned it. First we've heard. He was reputed to be a hardball type of guy. And with a name like that, you could understand why. I can't understand why. He's got a ridiculous <laughs> name. I imagine he'd be really, really teased at school if he's called Hank Skank. Hank Skank. Of Swedish descent. Oh, lovely. He was a second generation immigrant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It's not Ellis Island. Why do we care? Move on. Blue eyes, blonde hair, Ooh. and a lean stature. Ooh. James. He's got a bit of the rouse about him. Actually, that is a description of your kind of dream guy. What? Aryan, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> You've just outed yourself there. More to the point, he reputedly had no problem in telling Jim where to stick his ass if he felt a wrong decision was being oh. made by the owner. <laughs> not, not a phrase. <laughs> you can go stick your ass. <laughs> Go stick your ass in that bucket. <laughs> and where, yeah, where would you stick it? Stick your ass. <laughs> Hank Skank is already my favourite new character. <laughs> it was starting to look like it was as essential to win him over as it had been Jim. Five minutes later, Jim and Hank entered the room. Hank Skank? Hank Skank. Oh yeah, sure. The very same. Hank introduced himself and Jim asked him what he was doing that evening. <laughs> What? <laughs> Hello, ladies. I'm Hank Skank. What are you doing tonight? <laughs> Let me finish my introduction. The usual, Jim. Out mm. with the high rollers. Why'd you ask? How oh old God. is Hank Skank? I thought he was young and, like, beautiful. <laughs> Look, he is who he is. He is whoever comes out of my mouth. <laughs> I have no control over what comes out of my mouth. Hank Skank just went down in my estimation. Give Jamie a break. Like he's got five or six voices to juggle in this character in this chapter already. It's really in hard. this character, honestly, we'll, we'll hear five or six within this person. <laughs> yeah. The usual Jim out with the high rollers. Why'd you ask? Well. I've got a business appointment with Bella on some paperwork protocols we need to set up between the two companies. So I would appreciate if you could take Belinda under your wing, so to speak. Good if you're Bella, you'd be like, I thought we were going to have sex, not sign some papers. <laughs> it's all about the protocols. Though. Isn't it? What does protocol mean? <laughs> she really thought she was going to get a fun night, didn't she? Yeah. Why, sure, Jim. Belinda, that would be an honour. Can you get yourself to my office for 6.30 and we can go catch a game at the stadium? When is Hank Skank's voice going to break? <laughs> <laughs> catch a game at the stadium. <laughs> catch a generic game at the generic stadium. <laughs> Whichever sport Texans like to watch. No, not generic. The Crankies are in town. <laughs> the Crankies. The cr- as in the Crankies. As in the little man and the little woman. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Crankies are doing their biggest ever Best stadium, stadium tour. tour. It doesn't say Crankies. It does. The Crankies are in town and Ron and Nancy have promised me tickets. Who's Ron and Nancy? Who are these people? <laughs> Is that like Ronald Reagan and Nancy Reagan? Oh, probably, yes. The Reagans. Of course, oh, the Reagans. Course. Oh my God, it is set in the 80s. What's happening? I'm pretty sure they're both dead, the Reagans. <laughs> No, didn't they have mobile phones? It can't be the 80s, surely. <laughs> Wait, none of them have had mobile phones. What? None of them have had laptops. If she goes to a phone box in the next chapter... I die. Honestly, they sent a fax. It's actually oh the 80s. Yeah, no one's ever texted her, have No, they? it's not, because she's going to go and perform at the O2. Oh. Maybe that's a thing that Rocky thought he made up. <laughs> yeah, maybe. No, he's seen Coldplay there. Oh, sure. So wait, the Crankies are playing their biggest gig yet. They're all going to go... Oh, no, the two of them are going to go. <laughs> because Ron and Nancy sort them out. Yeah. So wait, you either support the Mets... The Yankees or the Crankies, is that right? <laughs> the Mets, the Jets or the Crankies. <laughs> <laughs> Go Crankies. The Crankies are in town and Ron and Nancy have promised me tickets. <laughs> Don't worry, it's soccer, you know. Football to you guys, so you'll enjoy it. No problem with a fourth ticket. Ron owns the place. <laughs> what, what the, the fuck? fuck? Honestly, I don't even know where to start. When do we think they're going to have sex? Before or after the big game? Something will definitely happen in the office. Oh, do you reckon? Yeah, before they go. You can't have sex at the Crankies. No, that's true. It's disrespectful. They're so going to have sex in the stadium. Oh. <laughs> in the bleachers. Oh. That's 
terminology that Rocky definitely doesn't know. <laughs> like Grease. A blowy in the bleachers. Oh my God. Is that a song? <laughs> it should be. Is that a bumper sticker? <laughs> That's definitely from Greece. Yeah, surely. Are the crankies like universally known? Should, should we? I don't think so. Do we need to contextualise for international think, listeners? Uh, maybe we do. So, uh, how do you contextualise? They're weird. How would you they? sum them Scottish. up? They were a Scottish comedy duo with a man and a woman who played a small schoolboy. Mm. I, think I've, I think I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> how it's not still a huge success, I'll never know. <laughs> No problem with the fourth ticket. Ron owns the place. Wow, Hank, that's great. I love seeing a few balls being kicked around. Oh. I'll be there on time. It doesn't even work as, a, as an innuendo. <laughs> no. You don't kick balls, balls. around. Yeah, she does. Oh. That's settled, said Jim. You and Bella had better not be late. Yes, sir, replied an extremely relieved Bella. She didn't like pulling rank over Belinda, but Jim had played it perfectly. Oh, so she thinks that he's planned it so they can spend the evening mm. together. He's so going to pull out a sheaf of papers when she gets there. She's going to be gutted. <laughs> Is that what you call it? Is it now a sheaf of papers? <laughs> Just a ratty sheaf of papers. Sometime later, Hank was sat opposite Belinda in a very discreet and quiet Italian restaurant. Here we go. Too bad the crankies got beat. Oh, God. Wow. What? <laughs> All that build-up. They've been a god. <laughs> I guess they won't have sex at either the office or the game or anywhere in between. <laughs> Too bad the crankies got beat. But as they say, you can't win them all. Belinda nodded. <laughs> I would have liked to hear a bit more about the crankies game. It's a shame we've skipped it so quickly. <laughs> well, that is Flintstone. It's soccer, James. You'd fully understand it. (laughs) Yeah. Belinda nodded and waited. She'd established during the football match that Hank was attracted to her, but he hadn't made any physical moves on her. That's not like uh, Belinda or any other man that's near her. (laughs) Yeah. She also didn't want to manipulate the situation. This guy was a tough dude. (laughs) (laughs) I imagine Belinda's wearing a backwards cap when she has that thought. (laughs) This guy's tough, dude. <laughs> and by being a bit too over-familiar, she could ruin the whole sterling deal. Of course she couldn't, as I'm sure we're all thinking, because the deal is done. <laughs> the, deal? the deal was done weeks ago, if not months ago. The deal has gone down. But also, like, a shag in the world of Belinda Blinked is not going to ruin any deal. In, in anything, it's going to, like, seal it harder. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> it was best for him to make the running, if there was any running to be made. Belinda just waited. For how she's... long was she silent at the dinner table? <laughs> Two books. I can well, quite. <laughs> she's playing it cool though. She's not normally this uh, gameplay. She normally just puts it out there straight mm. away. So by her not wanting to be manipulating, she's being the most manipulative she's ever been. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, this is like proper gameplay. This is like when you're dating someone, you get a WhatsApp, and you don't read it straight away, so you don't you don't get the two blue ticks. You just keep it. <laughs> Keep it great. Isn't it so great when it pops up on your home screen so you've not actually read it? But yeah. you have, yes. So good. Apparently now you can like turn it off so that everything appears unread forever so no one knows when you were last <gasps> online or what you've read and what you haven't. How did you do that? I don't know. Someone did it to me once. They were ghosting me at the same time so it's entirely <laughs> possible they just didn't read my messages. But uh, have you ever been ghosted? No. That's pretty gutting. Yeah. Happens quite a lot for you. It's happened a few times to me. People <laughs> just stop talking to me. <laughs> so is that... Where you're chatting to someone, it's all going fine, and then one day they just never reply ever again. Yeah, and you have no idea. You're like, what have I done? And I presume it's called ghosting because it's like they've died and turned into a ghost. Mm. <laughs> Is that why it's called that? They just disappear like a ghost. Oh, James. Hon- honestly, the politics of it, Alice. I'll have to teach you. So what do you do then? How- <laughs> you're obviously quite the teacher. <laughs> How many times do you try and get back in touch? Maybe you give it at once, but don't do it more than once. Like, take the hint. We have a friend when texting used to be a thing, she'd always say, never double green. Never. Never double green. What's double green? Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, on Tinder once, I, uh, I was on a night out and I'd matched with someone. And I woke up the next morning with a message from them and it was like, hey, handsome. And I was like, oh, hi, how's it going? So I like thought I'll text him back. So I just wrote a message like, oh, hey, how's it going? Sent it. I was like, hang on, why is his message blue and why is my message blue? Oh, God. I was in a conversation with myself. Oh, God. No. <laughs> I called myself handsome and then replied to it. <laughs> I had to unmatch immediately. It was so I can't embarrassing. I even look at you. And you wonder why you get ghosted. James. Jesus. 
Oh, God. I'm not sure you're ready to have your own mobile phone. <laughs> Seriously. The waiter handed out menus and Belinda chose a seafood starter, followed by spaghetti bolognese. Oh, my goodness. So this is where it gets its moniker, this chapter. Mm. Do you think it'll be Lady in the Tramp style? You know, the... Oh, that would be nice. Be nice, isn't it? A bit of romance, finally. Or what if she drops a bit on, like, her shoulder and she doesn't notice and he, like, licks it off later in the middle of passion? Or she drops, like, a meatball down there and <laughs> go find it. Very, very good choice, Belinda. Spaghetti bolognese, it's so basic. Classic. And might I add, a very brave one. What? Maybe because he thinks, you could, like, it can like... Um, oh, it's not date food, is it? Yeah, it can kind of like spatter all over you a bit. It's the classic splash. Sure. Yeah. Splashback, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> These guys do the best spaghetti sauce in all of Texas. In fact, I'm going to join you. How boring when <laughs> a couple order the same thing. So boring. Hank ordered a carafe of Chianti House White to go with the seafood and his favourite red, a big traditional Chianti with the bolognese. You don't tend to order all of your wine at the beginning of the night and (laughs) queue it all up. Also, carafe, cheap fucking skate, order a bottle. And mixing red and white is never a good idea. Not cool. Even though I have done it this evening. (laughs) Yeah, so Now, where were we? Hank's hand (gasps) settled on Belinda's knee. Belinda calmly took it and moved it higher and under. <gasps> to the undercarriage? Touching the meatball. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, hang on. I think he's put a comma in the wrong place. Oh, classic. Belinda calmly took it and moved it higher and under. Her evening gown, <laughs> utilising the long slit in its centre. <laughs> My favourite thing is the misplaced commas. Such drama. Belinda calmly took it and moved it higher and under. Her evening gown, <laughs> utilising the long split in its centre. You don't usually have a split in the centre. It's usually side split, usually. But there, there are central splits. I bet it comes really riskily close to her groin. <laughs> Do you think? Yeah, oh, yeah. I think we were discussing spaghetti, Hank. <laughs> <laughs> She's such a robot. Good answer, Belinda. And what smooth skin. Uh. He just keeps trying to deflect it back to like sexy talk. And he's like, <laughs> I believe we were talking about what to order from the nibbles part also, of the menu. smooth skin beats flaky skin, doesn't it? Any day of the week. <laughs> Belinda slowly raised her hand to the clasp at the top of her gown. As she undid it, the material fell to each side. Of her body? In a restaurant again. She thinks it's a freaking changing room. As she undid it, the material fell to each side still nicely retained by her erect nipples, but letting her cleavage show. (laughs) (laughs) So her nipples are being used as kind of... As pins. pins, (laughs) As coat hooks. (laughs) So gross. Hank sat back in his chair, his eyes still fixed on Belinda's chest, and removed his hand from her thigh as the waiter served the first course. Oh, I see. Yeah, behave yourself now, there's a waiter. Guys... A what? It was, needless to say, delicious. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love everything, just like an event happens, but all we hear about is the aftermath. It's a fantastic restaurant, needless to say. <laughs> it's got 3.8 on TripAdvisor. <laughs> <laughs> they quickly finished the white, and Hank got Belinda ready for the big red he had ordered. How did he get her ready? Did that rub her belly? <laughs> oh, you're going to love this. Burped her. Patted her back, yeah. <laughs> got her a straw. He felt his pants tighten in the groin region <gasps> oh. Oh. and he knew he was going to enjoy his bolognese sauce <laughs> what he got turned on by his bolognese <laughs> he got an actual hard on because of tomato sauce <laughs> minutes later the waiter served the spaghetti and left the sauce for Hank to dish out that's quite an unusual way to serve spaghetti <laughs> bolognese <laughs> totally weird it's <laughs> if you just plain dry pasta <laughs> they're just like a bowl of sauce <laughs> Raw, a ladle in hard it. pasta. It's like, bring your own water. Thank you. <laughs> Hank took the big ladle and served. <laughs> Belinda twirled the spaghetti with her fork like the professional she was. Professional what? Pasta eater? Professional <laughs> fork user. <laughs> yeah. She's a professional oh. forker. <laughs> <laughs> she can wield a fork like no other. I love that she's congratulating herself on using adult cutlery. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not using my fingers like I used to doing my spaghetti. Belinda twirled the spaghetti with her fork like the professional she was. <laughs> Dunked it in the sauce. Dunked it? Why well, is the sauce not... separate? And got stuck in. You don't... Di- it's not a fondue. Once Hank had assuaged his appetite and poured them both two more bottles of red wine... 
<laughs> into one glass. <laughs> they only had a carafe. Where's he getting all the bottles from? He stared at Belinda. He had an interesting technique, and one Belinda was keen to bring back to Europe. Mm. Though perhaps not for use inside a, by now, busy Italian trattoria. <laughs> Don't call it a trattoria. <laughs> Just call it a restaurant. restaurant. Oh, come on, it's a cafe if it's anything. Hank quietly ripped Belinda's evening gown. <gasps> In Quietly. two. <laughs> in two? Completely exposing her thighs and pussy. <gasps> oh, God, this is all happening so quickly. <sighs> but didn't remove it. He then... So, wait, in two. So, it's she's now wearing it as a waistcoat. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially. Okay. He no, then, that's in one. No, like, in two, like, so the back as well. So, now she's wearing it as, what, two sleeves? Yeah. Essentially. Sure. <laughs> he then took the ladle and trickled <gasps> the now cooled sauce... Over Belinda's breast. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Watching it slowly make its way down to her navel. Like two heaving calzone. <laughs> <laughs> this is so inappropriate in a restaurant. This is essentially a family-run, yeah. family-friendly restaurant that they've gone to. It doesn't sound like it's particularly posh. Oh She's head to toe, probably by now, by the time it's taken me to finish the sentence, <laughs> she'll be coated, head to toe naked. <laughs> Covered in tomato sauce. <laughs> But it's not even just tomato sauce, it's mince. beef bits in it. beef yeah. bits. That meatball. After about two minutes, it stopped and pooled at her shaven vagina. Oh my God. It Talk pooled. about meat flaps. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Alice. Nobody was talking about meat. <laughs> Once he had a big enough reservoir, he carefully opened her vaginal <gasps> lids. And what, dropped a little spiral of spaghetti in there? And let the sauce do its work. Oh, oh my <laughs> God, it's going to be like a taco. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Jesus. No, because Alice, one of our friends uses the taco emoji as a vagina. Do you know that that's a sexy emoji? So no. you obviously know that the aubergine is a sexy emoji. Right. So a boy sends somebody the aubergine emoji. Right. And that's like, you're keen. And then you send back, if you're keen, if you're a girl... The taco emoji. Because that's like, <laughs> I'd love to. Go for it. And then you send them together in one and it's like, yeah, this is on. This is on. Also, you know, the the, the dancing lady in the red dress yeah. emoji. Yeah. I always use that for Belinda. I think that is Belinda in an emoji. If there was no dress, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, it's her covered in spaghetti sauce. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Belinda studied the operation closely. Did it require just gravity? Or was it the source that did the flowing of its own accord? She decided to question Hank later on this technical matter. Later? It's always best to ask in the moment. <laughs> Hank slightly pushed back the table, got onto his knees and licked Belinda clean. Oh my God, they're in the middle of a restaurant. There's nothing less appropriate. Also, clean. Clean. <laughs> what does that mean in this context? Oh. What's that? You're not clean with loads of saliva all over you. I'm sorry. Oh, like a murder scene. You're, you're, <laughs> you're not a cat. You know, when a cat's <laughs> mum licks the babies. Horrid. Horrid. Do you think she dabs it with a napkin afterwards? Like like, like when you dab the sides of your mouth, she just dabs the sides of her vagina. And just goes, bon appetit. <laughs> <laughs> Finished. He made no sexual advance whatsoever. That was a sexual <laughs> advance. He's licking tomato <laughs> sauce out of her vagina. <laughs> he was hungry. <laughs> no sexual advance. Apart from the duties oh, his tongue had made okay. to Belinda. Thank fuck. <laughs> there was certainly now no need for a body massage the next day or so, she thought. What? He's gone deep tissue inside <laughs> with his tongue. Oh my God. That's skills. However... She was careful to compliment Hank on his capacity for genital duties, something she hadn't expected from a very senior exec. <laughs> genital duties. Clean as a whistle. She won't need to douche now. Oh, my oh. God. Oh, James. No, she will, definitely. <laughs> yeah, she, like if anyone's in need of a If anyone needs out. to douche, it's Belinda immediately, please. <laughs> Belinda to aisle three. <laughs> Why, thank you, Belinda. I guess it was all those vacation jobs I did when I was a student. Now, let's pass up on the dessert. Order some real Italian sausage and we'll eat it back at your room. <laughs> well, she's going to munch on some sausage <laughs> when we get back to the hotel. <laughs> oh, my 
my god. When do you ever pass up on the dessert and go back to the sausage course? <laughs> If you'll pardon my French. Seafood, <laughs> bolognese, then Italian sausage for dessert. Ideal. Belinda fiddled with her dress, <laughs> making it decent for the taxi ride back to the hotel. What's she done? Tied it together with some <laughs> napkins. Also, heaven forbid the taxi driver sees a naked, let alone all the patrons in the restaurant. A group of Japanese tourists have just watched a man eat his dinner out of her <laughs> pussy. Oh my God. Do you think they think that's a custom? Do you think they were taking <gasps> oh. pictures of it? Like, yeah, this is great. <laughs> they all start doing it to their, ha- <laughs> their guide. Yeah. It's an American tradition. <laughs> Housekeeping. Oh, God. Belinda fiddled with her dress making it decent for the taxi ride back to the hotel, whilst Hank ordered the sausage and two more bottles of wine. Jesus. Belinda was bemused and thought, things were not going at all to plan with this very strange man. This is so far off plan. (laughs) She shouldn't even still be referring to the plan, really. It was looking like he was one of those rare breeds. Someone who made sex through the use of food. (laughs) Made sex? (laughs) Shall we make sex? (laughs) <laughs> With the use of food. I have sausage. We make sex now. Everyone's a rare breed. Do you remember Alphonse is a rare breed because he was a voyeur? Yeah. Everyone's a, just a stupid rare breed. Yeah. Peter Rise is a rare breed because he's batshit. <laughs> Dr. Robbins is a rare breed because he should genuinely be in an institution. How exciting and somewhat unusual. What else would she learn tonight? Some common sense is all I hope for. <laughs> Hank softly shut Belinda's hotel room door behind them. He took the package of hot sausage and laid it on its silver foil wrapping on the bedside table. (laughs) (laughs) So they're genuinely going to eat the sausage before they have sex. Why so much sausage, Charles? But the thing is, though, that is a thing, isn't it? People do use food as like an aphrodisiac. Not not hot sausage. Precisely. (laughs) Rarely cold cuts. Rarely meat products. I think it's probably like... Oysters. Chocolate. Chalk. A bit of chalk. Pomegranates even. Even. Anything's better than hot sausage. Next, he took Belinda's ass in his hands. Oh, there we go. You sure are a pretty one, Belinda, he murmured. Can I strip you? <laughs> and fuck you? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> strip you. And fuck you. And strip you. And fuck you. And strip you. And fuck you. Oh, and uh, sausage. <laughs> Can I strip you? And fuck you? <laughs> Hank, you are so skillful with that bolognese sauce. I'd love to experience what your big <gasps> waffle could do to me. Oh, God. Oh. Why is it all so foody, this chapter? It's, it, it is a food themed chapter. Rocky he was hungry. He's read something, or he's hungry, or he's like watched a documentary about food production and he's just got overexcited. <laughs> Hank grinned and removed his clothes. He liked girls who could talk dirty. She said waffle. <laughs> yeah, we all calm down. With one hand, he ripped Belinda's evening gown off her. That's not impressive, it's in two halves. Completely naked, Belinda stretched herself out onto the same bed where Jim Sterling had test drove his new cock just the previous night. <laughs> Brilliant. If mattresses could talk. I just want to give Belinda a hug. Why? She's having a great time. I wouldn't be. My friend always says, chapter for the book. And I think that's what Belinda's thinking. She's like, my autobiography is going to be a bestseller. I mean, it's not because we're reading it. Oh, yeah, and it's not. (laughs) Fuck, what's the point then? Belinda took Hank's hand and offered him another piece of of Italian sausage. (laughs) (laughs) It's really hot. She carved it on the side. What's happening? He wolfed it down and stuck his rising cock into Belinda's vagina. Rising. Oh, rising. I feel like he just sat in the same place and it grew like a beanstalk. <laughs> she moaned softly. Mm. Hank belched. <laughs> <laughs> Alice is good at that. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that is disgusting. That's a talent. You're just jealous, so. Take that one to the bank, Al. <laughs> so she moaned softly. Hank belched and stuffed another piece of Italian into his mouth whilst oh. fucking Belinda hard. So he's shagging him and he's like scoffing the salami. <laughs> Please don't shag with your mouth full. Honestly. It's rude. It's rude. It's really rude. He's going to get indigestion. Belinda now had Hank where she wanted him, and she was going to prolong his experience. Besides, 
he had another two pieces of succulent yet substantial <laughs> sausage still to go. Oh my Stop god! Stop talking about the sausage. Wrap up the sausage and put it away. Like he's distracted. <laughs> I'm worried where he's going to put the sausage away though. Oh. No, but don't tell me it didn't cross your mind. Yeah. Oh. He was a tall man who played hardball in his business affairs. Well, Belinda would play hardball with him in her arena. A sexual arena. <laughs> yeah, we got it. <laughs> the like of which he had never encountered before. Honestly, that bed is like a fucking coliseum. Many a battle has happened there. Men have fought and men have died. <laughs> Are you not entertained? <laughs> and that is the end of the chapter. Oh. Stop. <laughs> Anyone else hungry? Honestly, <laughs> I could go anything from a linguine to a... A chorizo. Exactly. Any cold cuts, any, any hot sausage for that matter. A gnocchi, maybe? No. Oh. Um. <laughs> James only knows one food. God bless him. He had gnocchi last night for the first time. It's delicious. <laughs> I have to say, like, using food... Because like, we've often compared food to Belinda Blink, but I think this is the first time that Dad's done it. And a lot of people say that they think Belinda could be played by Nigella Lawson in the film. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, She'd have the great knowledge. Exactly. She'd know what to do with that sausage. <laughs> Hank Skank, as far as I'm concerned, has gone down in the history books of Belinda Blink. In the annals of history, if you will. Oh, yeah. Well, we only have one chapter left to find out what Belinda's going to do with him. No, what his plans are, what her plans are. Like, how is this going to be rectified? Hang on, one chapter left. And what is going to happen? She How's hasn't gonna even end? had a meeting with Jim Sterling. <laughs> no, she had a meet and greet. She barely had a meet and greet. Was that no, the meet and greet? that was me. Okay, so she flew to Texas to sign on the dotted line and make yeah. sure this contract was 100% done. Mm. What has she done with the time? She's been there for about 36 hours. She, well, she saw the crankies. She had some lovely hash browns, some overcooked bacon. Those waffles. <laughs> got fucked by a flaky penis and had bolognese sauce down it. I'm not saying she hasn't been it's busy. quite the eventful trip. And she met Sydney. Oh, well, of course, Sydney. Lovely Sydney. Quite the itinerary. That's a schedule for those that don't know. <laughs> so you've got to come back next week for the finale of Belinda <gasps> Blink 2. Oh, my God. We could never have imagined that this would be such a big thing. This is like the finale of, you know, proper shows. <laughs> Game of Thrones. <laughs> Game of Thrones level, for sure. <laughs> but I feel like it's going to be massively underwhelming, whatever happens. How dare you, James Cooper? It's Rocky Flintstone. You wash your mouth out. Wouldn't it be great if everyone got their friends together for the final episode to listen, oh. like, had a little listening party? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What will people need? I guess lots of chilli and chardonnay. Virginia and Tony. Of course. Uh, maybe you could dress up as your favourite character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could yeah. wear just a thong, or if you're a bit more prudish, thongs beneath. I'd love it if people took pictures of their party and sent them to us as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tag us on Instagram, actually, at my dad wrote her. Yeah, let's make this a huge event. Let's yeah. This is the Super Bowl of porn. <laughs> Who's going to be the halftime show? What's the chapter called? A Hot Afternoon at the Lazy P Ranch. <laughs> Stop it. Oh now, God. if that doesn't get you excited, I don't know what will. Stop what you are doing and download <laughs> that as soon as it comes out. I have to go and have a lie down because that is too brilliant. <laughs> yeah, come on. Let's go and get a snack. Mine's a taco. <laughs> oh. Famously not. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Aubergine. 